really feel like Miss Trunchbull. I just want to like, ow, my neck. <laughs> I thought it would be cute, but it's just a bit like, Anyway, hello, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna do half and half of my face, 2016 makeup versus 2024 makeup. I can't quite believe that 2016 was eight entire years ago. And my God, have the makeup trends changed? And actually, one of you guys suggested this when I was asking for video ideas a few weeks ago. And I am very intrigued. I think this video will be quite nostalgic, so let's do it. Also, before we get started, a huge shout out to e.l.f. who are sponsoring this video for their new Power Grip setting spray. I love the e.l.f. Power Grip primer. And this one, which is the e.l.f. Stay All Night Micro Fine Setting Mist, is one of my favorite drugstore setting mists. It's kind of like these two had a baby this is brand new in the UK. It is affordable, obviously, because it's e.l.f. It's £10. You can get it from their website, which is elfcosmetics.co.uk. You can get it in Superdrug, you can get it in Boots, you can get it on ASOS, you can get it on Beauty Base. I will leave a link down below. But it is the perfect little hybrid setting mist. It has the kind of oily layer on the top, and then the bottom layer is the kind of grippy stuff that helps to make your makeup last longer. Because it is a biphase mist, you need to give it a shake, mix it all up. And the mist on this... I mean, I don't even have any makeup on, but... It's so fine. So if you're looking for a makeup mist that gives your skin a glow, but also isn't just like pure oil, this also has the stuff in it that's gonna help your makeup last longer, but also give you that really nice glow. So it's kind of like a nice hybrid. It says infused with 5% aloe plus hyaluronic acid, squalane, and green tea seed oil. So it's a really nice hydrating one. And especially if you have dry skin or if you just wanna give your skin more of a glow, then this is really, really nice. But stay tuned because I will obviously be showing you this when I have some makeup on. Okay, so on this side of my face, I'm gonna do the 2024 makeup and on the other side I'm gonna do the 2016 makeup. So on the 2024 side I'm using the e.l.f. Power Grip Power Grip Primer which is hydrating but also leaves a sticky kind of feeling on your face so that like your makeup sticks to it you know. But 2016 on the other hand was all matte everything. I mean especially in my case but I really feel like back then it was matte everything apart from like a chunky glitter on the eye maybe. So I am using this which is the Indeed Nano Blur Primer which makes your face completely matte pretty much. Let me know down below which style of makeup do you prefer because I know that some people still love a full heavy glam and all matte everything. Just because the years changed and the trends changed doesn't mean that you actually have to follow the trends. I'm sure that a lot of people do myself included. My skin is going be crying on this side because the older I get the matte products just don't really do it for me. So back then it was all about thick full coverage foundation whereas now the trend is more lightweight foundations and skin tints and glowiness. So on this side I'm going to use the Catrice foundation. It's the skin, I mean it says on it this it's the True Skin Hydrating Foundation but honestly this is probably the most matte foundation that I own so I don't quite understand where the hydrating comes from but this is the only matte foundation that I now own that actually matches my skin when I don't have any tan on. It's the shade 004 Neutral Porcelain. And then on this side I'm using my trusty Ilia Skin Tint in the shade shade ST4 Formosa. Please excuse how disgusting this looks. I don't know why it leaks everywhere. It's a bit of a nightmare, but it's really nice on the skin. I mean, already the difference. The fact that this side just hasn't moved and this one is dripping down my face. I'm just gonna blend this in. That's actually probably way too much of that. Like you don't really need that much. Cause although it's a skin tint, it does still have good coverage, but let's do that. <laughs> I guess roughly down the center of my face. Skin-like, radiant, glowy, beautiful. And then this side, I'm gonna use my beauty blender just cause I think that's probably the only way we're gonna get this to blend. Oh my God. If it even wants to blend. When it comes to concealer, I'm pretty sure the main difference is the amount. It used to be <laughs> like this much. Whereas now I just do this. I'm gonna bring a bit down onto my neck where I have a few nice spots. And I find now that this is more than enough concealer. It still gives me enough coverage, but without looking super cakey. Sometimes I will go a little bit heavier handed, but like that's fine. We must have all been getting through concealer like there was no tomorrow. Like, <laughs> and fair enough, that does look brighter and more coverage, but I, uh, it's just a bit, it's a bit much for me now. This just feels quite alien to me now. It looks like a mask on my face, whereas this actually still looks like my face. Do you you know what I mean? Something interesting is that back in 2016, cream bronzer was definitely a thing and cream contour, I think because of the whole like Kim K movement. Kim K movement, like Kim K inspired. It was Kim and Kylie that were inspiring like 90% of makeup looks and they were definitely going for like the cream contour. I didn't get onto cream contour until, I don't know, maybe like 
two, three years ago, but because it was still a thing, I'm gonna use it and I'm using a Clinique chubby stick. And again, it was like a lot of contour. Um, let's see, can I do my nose? People definitely did their nose. I definitely did not do my nose. You know what? I still would use this product. I just wouldn't contour my jaw, but I would do my nose, so. Question is, is this now gonna blend over the top of this extremely matte base? Actually, you know what? Cream contour, I think in 2016, was probably more cool toned than this, but I do remember the Clinique chubby sticks being a thing. Because I wasn't like a cream contour kind of girl back then, I don't know what was popular. If you used cream contour in 2016, what was the thing that was like, all the rage because I don't know. That actually looks quite nice though. Blend it all in. I guess not a lot has changed with the whole nose contour thing. I didn't even bother contouring my nose back then, whereas now I do. But it definitely was a thing, I'm pretty sure. Just probably is more popular now. <laughs> oh my God, I've got this like distinct line. I guess, well, I guess that's how it's gonna be. 2024, cream blush is still thriving. I'm using this one from e.l.f. actually, which is not part of the sponsorship, but it's a really nice blush. It is the Pinky Promise shade from their liquid blushes. And people in 2024, I would say that blush is probably one of the biggest products on the market these days. Whereas back then, blush, not really a thing. I mean, obviously it was a thing, but it would just be like a light amount of blush. Oh my God. Okay, wait, <laughs> okay, wait, okay, wait. I always just get carried away. Um, and then I guess I'll put it on half my nose. Cream blush was not as popular and definitely not on the nose. It was not really a thing in my world anyway. I'm sure that people were using it, but just not as much as they do today. And I think like three or four years ago, I filmed a video, which was how I used to do my makeup back then versus how I do it now. But even I had a little look at that video and I still was not on the cream products. I was not using cream bronzer or cream cream blush. So that must be a pretty recent thing for me. 2016 blush was like, no, we don't need to look blushy and like we're alive. We just want to look ghostly and uh, contoured. And I guess one thing that hasn't changed is powder. Laura Mercier is still thriving. Um, Oh, however, powder application has definitely changed. And in the past few years, we've seen the rise in the powder puff, which has honestly changed my life. I'm not even being dramatic. Like powder puffs have changed my makeup application. And most of the time, because my skin is oily, I still do set everywhere, but then I will go back in with glowy products, which I'll show you in a sec. But, oh my God. Yeah, I didn't used to use a powder puff. I used to just take a big old brush and like tons of powder and just use a brush on my face, which there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever, but it's just different, you know, and doesn't quite look as smooth, I don't think. I don't really think powder bronzers have changed all that much. Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer still kind of slaps. Like, it's still a good bronzer and I still use it. I probably shouldn't be using it because this is the one that I probably got in 2016, but it was definitely like matte bronzers and cool toned bronzers, I suppose. Whereas now glowy bronzers are probably more popular, but I mean, I still use this, but I just do slightly less of it. Some of my old videos, I look back and my forehead is literally orange. So I guess we'll go with that today. <laughs> Sometimes my forehead still is orange, but whatever. It's fine. I like to be bronzed. Okay, actually, now I'm looking at myself. This side is maybe giving me more like youthful kind of vibes. This side is making me look more like kind of snatched actually. And again, back then, blush, highlighter. Fair enough, these were in a uh, different kind of packaging with like the drips on them. They now look very different, but this is the highlighter in Ice Me Out, an icy white highlighter with a small brush just in a stripe, like a Neapolitan ice cream minus the blush. Oh my God. <laughs> And highlighter, if you've been with me for years, highlighter was my thing. And I would genuinely go outside with just like the cool toned contour and then a stripe of highlighter that was white and it would go on the brow bone. Was I highlighting my nose back then? I'm not even really sure if I was, but let's do a little bit anyway on the side of my nose. Highlighter in 2024 is still a thing, but I think less of a thing and people want it to be more natural. And quite often now I'll go for a glowy blush or will like mix my blush with my highlighter or just go for highlighter that looks more skin-like and less like a silver stripe on your face. So I'm just gonna mix this Sephora blush, which is flirt it up with the highlighter in Sparkling Honey. I now kind of go for the approach of putting this all over my cheek with a slightly bigger brush rather than just doing a stripe because again I think this looks a little bit more natural and also put it on my nose but let's just do 
half my nose. But I just can't even imagine the days when I didn't use blush. I think now it's such a huge part of my routine. I can't do my makeup without blush now. And maybe as usual, I've gone overboard, but it is what it is. I really like blush. Sometimes people put a bit of blush on the chin. I've never done that before, so I don't know why I just did it. At this stage, I just want to show you. So can you see, I have obviously mattified this side of my face. I have added the glow of the highlighter, but my forehead is kind of mostly completely matte and same with the rest of my face. So I'm just going to give you an example of the e.l.f. Power Grip Dewy Setting Spray. Oh, that mist is so nice. And then wait for that to dry. Can you see how it's just given my skin more radiance and it makes everything kind of almost, um, melt in together a little bit and look more of like a skin-like finish? Because I do have oily skin, I then like to go back in with a little bit of powder just here but can you see how it just gives a really nice radiance and makes everything look more hydrated it's just such a nice setting mist it just gives such a nice finish if you like a dewy base then you're gonna love this stuff i will leave a link down below i'm also going to show you at the end how it can transform like a completely matte base so again stay tuned Alrighty. Let's zoom you in. We all know what I'm gonna use on my eyebrows on the 2016 side. Did we want natural looking eyebrow hairs with some nice little hair strokes? No. Did we just want a big block of color? Don't get me wrong, with a slight fade at the front, but also looking kind of square, yeah. Absolutely, sure, why not? I don't think I used any kind of brow gel back then, but if it was a brow gel, it would definitely have been a clear one, but actually looks kind of good. I'm confused why I don't hate it. Like I really thought I was gonna hate that, but I actually think it looks kind of um, like very polished. God, if I'd have done this video a couple years ago, even maybe last year or maybe two years ago, I would have been doing soap brows, wouldn't I? Although I never really hopped onto that trend super. Yes, I did. I definitely did for a while, was into the soap brow kind of super laminated kind of look, which I think we're even at the point now where some people look back on that and we're like, what are we, what were we doing? I think in 2024, it's still got the essence of the soap brow with it looking fluffy, but just a little bit more toned down. So that was the Refi Tinted Brow Gel in medium brown. And instead of the block brows, it's about more natural kind of brow strokes with skinny brow pencils and skinny little brow pens. And this one's definitely up for debate because I know that some people still love a bolder brow. So again, let me know which eyebrow do you prefer? Looking at them side by side, I do prefer the 2024, but I don't hate that. I still think it looks fine and maybe actually matches my hair a bit better. I'm very sad to report that a few years ago, I decluttered my Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow palettes. I don't own one anymore. Those were a huge thing. I never even had a Kylie eyeshadow palette, but those were also a huge thing. Obviously the Naked palette was before 2016, but they did the Naked Reloaded, which has slightly more warm tones in it. But I also have the Beauty Bay Fiery palette. You know what? I'm actually gonna use this Naked one for my 2024 look because it's not necessarily, there's not really, is there like a viral palette? You know what? Probably the Makeup by Mario palette. But 2024, I think is super, simple i'm just gonna go for this medium not super warm but also not cool toned shade it's usually these days a lot more soft glam and a bit of a neutral shade kind of through the crease wing it out a little bit still a winged liner but more of a smoky subtle well i mean it's not very subtle is it but a bit more of a smoky wing with brown brown liner is definitely still a 2024 kind of thing so just a little bit softer and instead of chunky glitters i would say it's more about finer glitters this is ColourPop ritz but this kind of thing and oh my god the ah oh, i should have used the urban decay one like the space cowboy but this is pretty much a dupe for it but just this very soft sparkly ethereal kind of eyeshadow <laughs> maybe a little bit on the lower lash line but nothing too crazy and then i'm actually just gonna do a little bit of brown in the waterline I'm still gonna highlight the inner corner though, but just a very kind of soft, easy, super easy and quick glam. Whereas in 2016, we're dipping into some of these oranges, burgundy and orange. Let's go for the shade Brisk. I'm pretty sure I used to just do my entire eye with a big fluffy brush, which I mean, fine, yes, yeah, it's, it's easy. Definitely very easy. And it would either be a cut crease or it would be all completely matte or it would be like a very intense, halo eye which i used to go for the halo eye kind of look quite often whoa okay this kind of thing was my signature kind of look so let's now dip into one of the orange shades who started the whole burgundy kind of trend i could not tell you who started it but it was everywhere it was everywhere i would literally just take the same fluffy brush and go under my eye like 
a raccoon. Let's go for an intense inner corner highlight. I don't know why I still own this, but it is the Zoella X Colourpop OG eyeshadow. And should I be putting this on my eye right now? Most definitely not, but I'm gonna do it just for the video and I will take this straight off afterwards. You know what, it's actually still really pretty, but I'm pretty sure I used to just paint it on kind of pat out the yep oh yeah oh yeah that is bringing me right back and it's got to be the kvd tattoo liner or just any black liner really oh my god i should not have had caffeine before this video i'm trying to do my liner and my hand is like this oh my god i actually can't do it in my hand why am i so shaky to be fair that's probably what it looked like back then mascara trends haven't really changed i think just back then i didn't used to wear lashes everywhere but lashes were definitely like thick big chunky lashes were definitely more of a thing. So I'm just gonna put on a little bit of mascara on my top. These days, I don't bother with lashes as much, but if I do, I think the outer corner lashes are more of like the trend. It is wild how different my eyes look right now. I'm just gonna do a little, oh, just done a little outer corner lash. Do another one. Okay, maybe those are a bit too curly. I wanted them to go like fan outwards a little bit, but that will do. I believe these are Rachel Leary's lashes with Unicorn Cosmetics, but but they're not in a box. But these are the thickest lashes that I could find in my collection. Liner was so thick that it was easier to stick on a big pair of lashes like this. And don't get me wrong, a lot of people still love a thick, bold lash. And these lashes are gorgeous. I just simply cannot be bothered. And then finally, oh wow, I look like a different person. And finally, for the lip, the lip trends of 2016 versus 2024. They uno reversed that because now it is all about glowy, almost, I would say a rosier kind of nude lip. And lip oils are now huge. So I'm gonna take the e.l.f. lip pencil in Truth or Bear. By the way, the names are on the lid of these. I didn't know that until recently. <laughs> oh my God, the foundation lips. And then I'm also gonna use the e.l.f. lip oil in Rose Envy, which is probably my favorite shade from the range, just to give hydration and my lips are so much better for the 2024 lip trends because they just feel so much nicer. Who doesn't want a hydrated lip? And then sadly, for the 2016 side, I don't have any of my old liquid lipsticks because they went off. So I'm gonna use a matte brown toned nude. This one is from Kaleidos, it's the shade Skinship. And there we go. These are the differences of 2016 makeup versus 2024 makeup. Let me know which one you prefer and let me just zoom you in because the contrast is pretty stark. Here we go. I definitely prefer this side. It looks more like me, I guess, whereas this one really feels like a mask and I've just noticed that I have a crazy line of that contour. My lips feel so weird actually with the different sides, but let me know what you think. This side is dry as the Sahara Desert. This side feels nice and comfortable. And I just want to show you quickly to transform this like really matte side of my face, just to show you how well this works. If I give it a shake, spray it all over that matte crusty looking side of my face. Can you see like, especially on my forehead, how that's just brought some life back to my skin and made it look a lot more, I mean, I was going to say skin-like. It looks a lot with the amount of makeup that I've got on and how like this whole stripey situation. But do you see how it's just made everything sort of melt into each other a little bit better and look more natural and just a really nice dewy look but without looking like an oil slick. If you're into that kind of thing, this is really nice. And thank you Elle for sponsoring the little setting spray part of this video. I will leave a link down below. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know if there's anything else you would like to see down below. I hope you enjoy whichever makeup style you prefer. That is totally fine. You do you, what works for you is all that matters really. So no offense, these are just my personal opinions, you know, about each of these sides of my face. So I hope you guys are good and I will see you in my next video. Bye!